Hi everybody and welcome to my session for Teach It Languages around promoting an inclusive approach with tips on accessibility using technology in the languages classroom. My name is Joe Dell, I'm a former languages teacher. I taught French for 13 years, 3 years at secondary school level and 10 years at middle school level on the Isle of Wight, which is where I live. And for the last 12 years or so I've been an independent languages consultant. Before the pandemic I would travel all over the world speaking at conferences and running training on how technology can enhance language learning. And since the pandemic, I've been doing most of my work through webinars as well as the odd face-to-face -face session, which I've been absolutely loving. You'll see that I have closed captions on the screen. That's because I am using Zoom at the moment to share my screen, but I'm also recording the session using a third-party tool called Camtasia. I could have used Loom or Screencastify, but the reason I'm doing that is because uh, you can have live captions in the Zoom session, but then when you record the session in Zoom, uh, the live captions don't appear so that's why I'm doing that and why I explained it to you because I thought this is, a, this is appropriate considering we're talking about accessibility using technology. You'll see if I move the subtitles out of the way my Twitter handle is there I'm at Joe Dell on Twitter I now have over 34,000 followers on Twitter which is a little bit crazy if you think about it but I have been on Twitter since 2007. Do get in touch if you'd like to um, contact me send me a direct message or ask me to retweet something for you that's absolutely fine. Likewise, my email address is joedell at talk21.com as well. So feel free to get in touch with me after this session. And I really hope that you find it useful. You'll see the odd um, typo of the odd funny uh, comment coming up on the uh, subtitles, but that's just part of the course. There we are. OK, so let's go on to the first slide in the presentation. You can see here um, I'll be talking about a range of different tools, very practical as normal. We'll be looking at Natural Reader, Immersive Reader, Microsoft Lens, Word Online, Transcription and Closed Captioning PowerPoint, plus a few other things as well. So um, a little bit more about me. Um, if you're really interested um, on this, you can uh, press the pause button and then read all about the things I've been doing in the last few years. But um, I know what you're really interested in is the practical ideas. So let's start with these. So you can see what I've done is for the, the um, forthcoming slides, I have talked about the different features that are available with the different tools I'll be talking about. So the first tool we're looking at is called Natural Reader or naturalreaders.com is the website. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come out of the presentation like this and I'm actually going to take you straight to the website. So it looks like this. Um, and as you can see here, it says go to online reader. Now, Natural Reader is available as the online reader, the website. It's available as a Chrome extension. And um, for tablet users or phone users, you can have the iOS and the Android app as well. So it does really work on all devices, which is fantastic for accessibility and promoting independent learning. So we'll go to um, this page here. I have to log in. It recognizes my, my text automatically. It's remembered uh, the text that I put in there before so that's wonderful what I'm going to do is just delete that and show you what it uh, looks like from scratch um, what I've done is I've actually taken um, an article from Le Monde here uh, which is today's paper and I'm now literally just highlighting the text right clicking clicking copy going back to the online reader and pasting it in like that there we are so the first thing that you do once you've pasted in the text is you have to click say here and you choose the voice that you want. You can see I've got French loaded up here, so I'm going to choose Paul. And um, once you've done that, you can then press play like this. Ah, now a classic mistake. What I need to do is highlight the text and then press play. La canicule prendra fin progressivement lundi 20 juin dans le pays, prévoit Météo France qui a placé 10 départements en vigilance au... OK, now, it does sound a little bit robotic, the voice, but it's not too bad as a model from pronunciation. Now, you can see at the bottom here, you've also got a transcript appearing, which is fantastic. Um, if you click here, you can choose the speed. So if I want to go more quickly, like that, sort of standard... There we are, it should be... That, there you are, that's the standard speed. Let's see what that sounds like. La canicule prendra fin progressivement lundi 20 juin dans le pays. So there we are. And obviously you can go faster or slower. So that's really nice, I think, from that point of view. If I move my um, thumbnail there out of the way, you can see there are some other options. If I want to turn off the closed captions, I can click here like that. Uh, if I want to copy uh, the text here to my clipboard and paste it underneath, I can do that as well. Uh, if you click on the save option, it doesn't seem to do anything. So maybe I've done something wrong. Oh, no. OK. The text file has been saved. OK. So you can save it as a text file as well if you wanted to. Um, if I click on the A option here, I can change the text size 
like that. That's quite nice. You can choose the text spacing like that as well. Uh, you can have the dyslexia font if you want to, which is obviously going to help uh, dyslexia readers. If you turn that off and then click on the three dots here, you can see there are lots of other different, different options as well. There is the convert to MP3 option, but it's a paid for feature. And there's a few other features here that you can obviously can have a look at as well in your own time. So that's how Natural Reader works. Now, if I go to the actual website again that I was just in called Le Monde, um, what I can do now is show you how the Chrome extension works. So I've got the Chrome extension installed, and that means I can now select some text, right click, and click where it says Read Selection. Okay, that will then produce, there we are, that produces a little player that's here, and I can now press play and listen to the text read back to me like this. La canicule prendra fin progressivement lundi 20 juin dans le pays, prévoit Météo France. Okay, so that's another way of doing this. You don't need the online reader, you can just use the Chrome extension. If I click on the plus icon here, you can see that there are some uh, different options. So if I scroll down, uh, I've got English UK here. I can keep going down. I've got Spanish. I've got French, I've got German, Italian, you've got lots and lots of different languages there as well. And again, you've got the more settings option here, you've got the other options here, some of which are uh, part of the premium package. So this is just giving you a little flavor of how Natural Reader works. Okay, fantastic. Let's go back to uh, my presentation, go to slideshow, and here we are. Okay, so uh, as I said, it works on all devices. There's the online reader, there's the Chrome extension. It works on iOS and Android as well. Uh, you can read any text on a web page or as a PDF as well if you want to. Um, you can choose different voices, the reading speed, the text size, the spacing, and uh, if you want to have the dyslexia font as well if you want to. Okay, so let's go to the next tool, which is Immersive Reader. This is probably my favorite um, reader that exists that I'm aware of. Uh, it's really fantastic. It comes with um, lots of Microsoft tools such as Word, OneNote, Edge Browser, Microsoft Lens, Teams, Flipgrid and Wakelet. There's also an unofficial Chrome extension which I'm going to show you uh, in a moment called Use Immersive Reader with Websites. Um, and you've got some other features here as well. But as before, let's just go for it and uh, see how it actually works in practice. So let's click Exit Slideshow. Uh, let's go back to the article. I wanted to copy like that, go back to go to Word, should I say, not go back to Word, go to Word, and I'm just gonna do Control V to paste in the text. Okay, so I pasted the text in, and then what I do is I go to the View menu, and you see that uh, Immersive Reader is here. So if I click on Immersive Reader, what happens is it comes up like this, and it should recognize the language automatically. I don't have to choose the language, which is a really nice feature. Oh, really nice feature, I think. Let's move that out of the way, and go to the beginning, and click Play. La canicule prendra fin progressivement lundi 20 juin dans le pays, prévoit Météo France, qui a placé 10 départements en vigilance. Now the Zoom subtitles are going crazy because it thinks I'm speaking in English, but of course I'm not. Uh, this lovely lady here is speaking in French. Um, so if I go to the voice settings, as before, I can do some different things. I can choose the voice speed, I can go slower, like this. Vigilance orange aux orages. Au total... 21 départements sont concernés par une vigilance orange. 11 du 7 reste sont maintenus en niveau orange okay. pour Sounds canicule drunk, Jura. Sounds a bit drunk, go on to the so male voice. Saône-et-Loire, Allier, Puy-de-Dôme, Cantal, Haute-Loire. There we are. So that's really, really nice, I think, straight out of the box compared to, say, Natural Reader. Um, but also, in addition to this, what you can do is the following. You can click on the A option, which is text preferences. Um, that will allow you to do things like increase the spacing if you want to. Um, you can choose different fonts. If you're a big fan of uh, Calibri or Sitka or Comic Sans, you can do that. You can change the themes here as well. So if you'd like to have a yellow background, that could be helpful for dyslexic uh, readers or have a blue background, etc. cetera. Um, that's fantastic. So. That is the, the text uh, preferences. If you then go to here, the grammar options, this is also really fantastic. So if I choose all the different parts of speech, as you can see on the screen, it will show me uh, which words are nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. I can also click on the show labels option. And you can see here it says ADJ over publié or noun for lundi, uh, etc. So that's also really useful for um, word order and text analysis um, for independent practice, uh, promoting autonomy, etc. You can even um, 
turn on the syllables option as well and that will actually break down the words into different syllables which is wonderful um, another option in immersive reader is this one um, called the reading preferences you can choose line focus if you want to uh, have just one line at a time in the olden days um, we used to use a ruler didn't we underneath each line um, but why not use the digital version of doing the same thing you can also show three lines at the same time like that um, the idea being that if you show the whole text for some students they might feel overwhelmed by the text or if they are uh, dyslexic then they might find that the the words are sort of jumping around on the screen in front of them so having that one line focus could be very very helpful um, another idea which could be very helpful as well I think is the the picture dictionary so if I show you how that works, if I, for example, go up to the top and I go to I hover over a word like Le Pi and click on it, you can see that you get the, and these little uh, images which could help you understand what uh, the text is all about. Likewise, if I go to here, you can see that I've got uh, a picture here for stormy weather and you, and you see how it works. OK, so that's also really useful, I think, from the point of view of being able to support learners who maybe need a bit more support in relation to um, them understanding the text. Now if I click on other words such as this one you can see that the word has come up, there isn't a picture but I can listen back to what that, uh, it, what that sounds like if it's pronounced like this. Département. For example, or let's go for another one. Vigilance. Perfect. So that uh, actual example, Vigilance and Département, those are both cognates but the children might try to pronounce them in an English way but of course they want to know the um, the, 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 in this case the French pronunciation. Okay, let's go back to uh, this option here, the reading options, and you can see there's also the translate option. So if I uh, choose the language I want to translate this into, for example, uh, as we've got a French text, let's go for uh, English. So you can see you have even got different varieties here. So I'm going to choose United Kingdom and I've got the by word option selected. So here, for example, if I click on uh, this option, oh, this option here, um, you can see that it's translated uh, orage into storm. So that's really nice, the way that you can translate individual words. Or for canicule, you can see that it's pronouncing it, um, it sorry, it's, it's translating its heat wave. And can you even listen to the uh, translation as well, like this? Heat wave. There we are. And then the French. Canicule. Okay. And if you want to translate the whole document, we just select a document like that, and it will now translate the whole document. Uh, as much as it can into English, which is really great to see. So Immersive Reader is fantastic, but you do need to have an Office 365 subscription for it to work. But you'll, it, you'll be pleased to hear that there is a Chrome extension called Use Immersive Reader with Websites. And I'm going to show you how that one works right now. Um, so let's go to this um, article again. Just get rid of this uh, little page here. And this time what I'm going to do is highlight the text. So this will work on any web page. Uh, right click and then go to where it says help me read this help me read this that will come up if you have the Chrome extension installed so if I click help me read this you'll see what's going to happen now It's exactly the same as before but you do need not you don't need to have an office 365 account for this to work so let's have a quick play and see how it works la canicule prendra fin progressivement lundi 20 juin there we are and it's working in exactly the same way so that's a really really nice tip it is an unofficial um, Chrome extension. It's not uh, by Microsoft, but it does work. So do check that out as well. Okay, so let's uh, carry on with the presentation and go from there. Okay, so that's uh, Immersive Reader, um, which is a Microsoft tool, which is absolutely fabulous for accessibility. The next thing I'm going to show you is also a Microsoft tool. This one's called Microsoft Lens. It's a mobile app. It works on iOS and on Android and it lets you take a photo of text on paper or handwriting and convert it to digitized text. So let me show you how uh, this one works. To do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a new share and I'm actually going to bring up my iPad on the screen. So I'm going to click on the share option here like this. And there we are. As you can see, this uh, page then comes up and then on my iPad, what I have to do is I have to uh, pull down bottom right to bring up what's called the control panel tap on the um, the mirroring option, choose my uh, my iPad, it says Zoom uh, Joe for this to work. And then in a moment, there we are, you can see my screen like that, so that's perfect. And so what I'm gonna do now is launch uh, Microsoft Lens, which I've actually got here at the bottom here. Okay, so I'm now, as you can see, I've got on the screen, I've got some, some text, it's a nice little postcard I've got here. And I'm now um, 
going to press the white shutter button to take the picture and you can see that I've got the document option selected. So if I press this right now, it takes a picture. You can see that you've got little handles appearing automatically um, around the, the picture, which is fantastic. And I'm going to now come to tap uh, confirm. So this could be really useful, for example, digitizing worksheets. Um, so a paper worksheet and turn it into a digital version. So if I now tip confirm, like that, there it is. It's flattened the image as well, which is great. Um, I, I could tap on add and I could do multiple um, scans and um, export them all as one PDF if I wanted to. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tap the done option. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to turn this into a PDF, I could uh, just tap on the PDF option and then share that however I wanted to share it. But what I want to show you here is actually the way I can tap on the word option here. And what that will do now is it will turn my scan into a Word document. So we're just waiting for that to finish. There we are. There it is. Uh, this has now come up here. It's now loading up the, there we are. It's loading up the, uh, the Word document. And you can see that I've got the text there, which is digital. I can now, um, for example, I wanted to delete the, the letter T there. I can do that. Um, and if I scroll down, you can see that all the text is there, plus the original photo as well. So that's absolutely fantastic, and that's how it works. Um, so if I now go back to my, there we are, to here, and I tap the X option, then I can then start again, and away we go. So that's how you can easily uh, scan a paper worksheet and turn it into a digitized version. You can also, um, having scanned it, you can also uh, tap on the immersive reader option. Let's uh, see if we can do that right now. Tap confirm, tap done, and you'll see it says immersive reader at the bottom there. So I tap on immersive reader, and then it should allow me to run immersive reader as well. Let's just see what's going to happen. So it's processing it. There it is. Okay, so it's, it's made a slight mistake on the Gracias bit, but you can see that I can press play. Inches. There we are. Thank you. Messi. Okay, so what it's doing is it's thinking the whole thing is in English, but um, but if it was all in the same language, then it would recognize the language. So there we are. That's how that works. Perfect. So let me um, do a new share and go back to my main screen and click share. Okay, there we are. Perfect. So that's hopefully giving you a good understanding of how uh, Microsoft Lens works and how you can use it in the Languages Classroom. Okay, lovely. Let's carry on. Okay, now we're going to have a look at Google Keep. So Google Keep is um, a tool I use all the time on a daily basis for note taking. Uh, it works on all devices. So there's the uh, the web based version. There's the Chrome extension. It works as um, as an app as well on iOS and on Android. Um, you can upload an image containing text, including handwriting, and, and you can use the grab image text feature, which I'm going to show you in a second. So let's have a look at how that one works. If I click Exit Slideshow. And I go to Google Keep, which it so happens I've got open. Uh, this is a screenshot of that slide, so it's an it's an image. It's not um, this is not editable text. It's an image. So to turn this into ed um, editable text, a little bit like um, what I did with Microsoft Lens a moment ago, I click on the three dots here, and you can see it says Grab Image Text. So I click Grab Image Text. And it's done it already. It does it very very quickly, and you can see there is the editable version of this. So I can, for example, um, get rid of, let's say, the letter S there, put it back, etc, etc. So this is brilliant um, as a great way of grabbing image text. This works on the app as well. Um, and uh, it works exactly the same way on the app. You just uh, scan the image. Uh, in fact, I'm going to show you that in a second. But also I want to show you this, the three dots, you can click on the copy to Google Docs option here. That will now uh, open up a Google Docs page there we are click open doc there it is and you can see the image is there and then the text is underneath so if you wanted to do that as well that's another great thing that you could do okay so as i said i'm going to show you now how the um the uh google keep works on the uh, on the app so to do that i'm going to share my screen again there we are so i'm just come, going to come to here i'm going to click on the new share option again as before and choose iPhone, iPad, click share, and there we are. So just as before, exactly the same process, I launch the control panel, I tap on the uh, screen mirroring option, 
and this should now load straight away fingers crossed here we are okay so now I'm going to launch um, Google Keep and you can see that this is a blank note and I'm going to click on the plus icon here and I'm going to uh, click take photo okay so now what I'm going to do this is literally literally the back of an envelope so I'm just going to try and write while well, hold, holding the iPad um, I'm going to try and write this is this oh <laughs> let's start again right okay so this is a test okay there we are can you see so I'm going to take a photo of that in Google in Google keep tap use photo there we are and then I have to then tap on the picture like this tap the three dots and it says grab image text so I tap grab image text I hope this works and then what should now happen it's done it fantastic can you see so it's it's recognized my handwriting and it's put this is text underneath so I could do exactly the same thing as before I can tap on the three dots uh, I can tap make a copy I can delete it um, uh, yeah that's absolutely fantastic I'm really delighted that worked okay lovely so let's uh, go on to new share and go to screen one and click share you'll all be trying this at home now I know okay there we are lovely so let's uh, go back to the presentation which is here and move me out the way a bit click slideshow and let's carry on so as you can see Google Keep is wonderful for being able to grab image text as well as other things that should make to-do lists and what have you but particularly in relation to this grabbing image text it works uh, not only with uh, written text but also with uh, handwritten text as well okay let's uh, let's carry on okay I'm now going to show you the transcription and dictation option in uh, Microsoft Word online okay so you can see again you've got all these different features here let me just show you live how it works so if I uh, click here exit slideshow it so happens I've got Word open like this let's go back to uh, here there we are and we'll get rid of this uh, the text here and I will uh, click on the uh, home option there we are and you can see here it says dictate and if I click here it also says transcribe so with that in mind if I click on the transcribe option what I can do is I can uh, first of all if I just get rid of that there I can um, uh, you can see uh, this is an example I've done earlier so let me just get rid of that there we are there we are and let's get rid of that and start again so I go to here and I click transcribe okay right so um, let's click on new transcription there we are that's what I wanted okay so I can either upload audio so I could record let's say using a tool like Vocaroo or online voice recorder uh, record the audio as an mp3 file and then upload it but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to click on the start recording option now you'll see here it says English United States so if I choose another language uh, for example French from France then I can now uh, click start recording and then say for example last weekend I went to the cinema like this the weekend dernier je suis allé au cinéma right I've just pause the recording I can then reflect and then carry on uh, click save and transcribe now I'm just doing something really quickly and easily just show how it works and it's done it already can you see superb now if I click here it says add to document I can choose to just add the text with speakers if you've got more than one speaker it should recognize the speakers which is amazing you can have the timestamps and with speakers and timestamps so I'm going to choose the latter the last one should I say and there it is I can also click on this link I can download the audio if I wanted to and I've got a lovely transcription which is just incredible now in relation to the dictation option this time what I'm going to do let's get rid of that um, I can click on the dictate option like this and it's now recognizing my voice okay you can see it's recognized it's in English and it's um, allowing me to write some text on the screen and there we are it stopped stop um, listening to me right now so I'm going to click on the cog option and you can see it's recognized uh, I was supposedly speaking in English US anyway that was working if I click on this right now uh, let's move it out of the way if I click on this right now then I can change it to say French let's see if this works now if I click Save get rid of the text like that and then click on the microphone 
and go for it. So, le weekend dernier, je suis allé au cinéma. Perfect. So now it's transcribing uh, my, my, sorry, I'm dictating um, using my voice, obviously, and it's turning my voice into text. So again, for modeling pronunciation, for accessibility, uh, for creating a, a transcript of what you're saying, uh, this is fantastic. Um, now the equivalent in uh, Google Docs, uh, which also works in Google Slides as well, is what's called voice typing. So let me show you how that works. So if I go to the, uh, the tools menu, and I go to voice typing, there's also a keyboard shortcut, which is Control Shift S or Command Shift S on a Mac. I click voice typing and I click uh, the microphone like this. You have to give permission for Chrome to access the uh, microphone first or the Google Docs to access the microphone. Here we go. So this is an example of using voice typing in Google Docs. OK, so that's worked really nicely. If I click on English UK, I can choose, as you can see, uh, another language. So I'm going to choose uh, French, which is, there we are here, and here we go. Le weekend dernier, je suis allé au cinéma. And it's done a really, really good job. You can even say things like new paragraph and full stop and uh, question mark and things like that, and that will work as well. You don't have the transcribe um, uh, option in the same way that you do in Word, but what you can do is if you have, say, a phone or an iPad or what have you, playing uh, an audio source, which could be, for example, a YouTube clip into the microphone with Google uh, Docs uh, voice typing enabled, then it will then make a sort of transcript. It won't be as accurate compared to what I've just shown you in Word, but it does work, okay? So that's voice typing in Google Docs and dictate and transcribe in Microsoft Word online. It works in the online version. Okay, let's carry on. And also with the with the Microsoft um, transcription and dictation, you get up to 300 minutes per month, which is plenty, I would imagine, uh, for you to, to do, okay? Okay, so voice typing I've just talked about, that's fantastic. And let's go to the next one. Okay, uh, closed captioning in PowerPoint. This is the last one I'm gonna show you. Uh, and this is uh, a really, really good one to finish on. So I'm going to click exit slideshow like that. I'm going to go to PowerPoint and you can see what I've got here is just um, uh, the slide, the same slide that you were just seeing, but it's actually an image. And what you do is you go to slideshow like this and you go to where it says always use subtitles. So you click on this here and you choose the spoken language. So I'm speaking in English UK uh, and then for the subtitle language, you can choose another language. So I'm going to choose French. Um, but you could choose obviously any language that this is here. And then you choose where you want the um, the transcription, sorry, the, the subtitles to appear, uh, below, above, etc. So I'm gonna go for below. And then all you have to do now is simply uh, from the beginning or from current slide. And you can see now that what is happening is um, I am having my voice turned into French automatically. So that's really nice, I think. I'll keep speaking just to see if there are any major errors, but it seems to be doing a good job. Lovely, okay, let me uh, come out of the, uh, the presentation there. And this time I'm just going to go to here and show you another, another suggestion, which is here, the subtitle language, you can actually choose Ukrainian. Now I showed this to um, a group of European teachers recently in a course I was doing in Dublin, um, people from Germany and from uh, Italy and from Spain and, and, and other places around Europe and they were having uh, Ukrainian uh, refugees coming in and they thought this was a great idea. So let me show you how this works. So if I click on from current slide, now I can speak in English and what it is doing, as you can see, is turning my voice automatically uh, with the subtitles in Ukrainian. So it could be that you're using PowerPoint in this way as a way of promoting accessibility with Ukrainian refugees who have joined your class. So, delighted that worked. Okay, so let me uh, come out of the presentation like that, go back to my presentation here in Google Slides, lots of things happening here, and we're now coming to the end. So I really hope that you found the session useful. Um, this is the last slide. My name is Joe Dale, my contact details are there. Do get in touch if there's any further advice you'd like around um, the promotion of inclu uh, an inclusive approach with tips on accessibility using technology in the languages classroom or anything to do 
with Technology in the Languages Classroom as well. I really do hope that you found this useful and thank you to Teach It Languages for this opportunity. Uh, stay safe and uh, keep well. Bye for now.